Hey gamers, it's me, Marco49, and I'm here to give you guys what you've wanted. I know you guys have been asking for this for a long time, and I've finally been able to get you guys the more tutorial. And although I've been giving you guys a lot of the uh, PR Season 1, which is uh, just a series based on uh, different rounds, I felt that if I was going to do a more tutorial, I had to do it right. I had to make sure that I was able to present you guys with the best possible tutorial that I can. Uh, and this right here that we're watching now is some footage from earlier whenever I was uh, leading a mortar squad on Wanda Sean. And you can see that it's very fast paced and it's a very uh, demanding role. You may think that leading a mortar squad is easy, but it is quite a difficult task. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and we're going to move on to the tutorial. Here we have the conventional forces mortars, the M252, and you can see the layout of it. It's a nice little mortar tube uh, with a few rounds sitting on the uh, corner there. Um, you see kind of like the little dials and all the different controls there. An important change to the current PR is that instead of having two mortars, uh, you can also have uh, three mortars, which is going to make it a very valuable asset to have on the field and something that everyone's going to want to use. Um, this is an example of a good uh, mortar fire base and uh, you can see we have uh, red sitting up there. Now, uh, to build the uh, fob you need to have two crates to build both the fob and the mortars and this is the same for any other emplacements you want to place also. And so what we're going to do is fast forward. So right here we have red who's our volunteer and you can see he's manning one of the mortars. Um, you kind of see here that when he fires, you see the smoke effects. This is not just for aesthetics, as if you were to fly a chopper over top, or if this mortar was indoors, it would cause the explosion to happen uh, on the impact of the chopper or the ceiling, which would not be good, which is why it is ideal, just like in real life, to place mortars outside and away from any obstructions. It is also important to note that all mortars must be in the same fob and not spread out across the map. So now we see uh, we're a spotter now and the spotters are any squad leader, any spotter kit that has a uh, GLTD. And with a GLTD you're able to mark targets. So here we have an enemy uh, squad over here which we're going to mark for mortars which would be setting a target. We're going to map and finding the range. Once you found the range, you're going to select the range on your GLTD and then press mortar mission on the top. And as you can see, it makes a little symbol up there and any mortar team or anybody on the map will be able to see that mortar mission. Now let's fast forward to a mortar operator and see how he does his job. When you first enter the mortar, you're going to be presented with this menu here and you'll see the different numbers have to do with different types of ammo, high explosive, air burst, smoke, and mortar HUD. The mortar HUD, which is here, has different types of modes so you see up the top middle we have deflection which is going to decide which direction your mortar is facing you can uh, toggle that by using a and d key on your keyboard likewise on the bottom here we have our calculator which is our range height and on the left we have our bearer elevation which is controlled by w and s key now what does this bearer elevation have to do with anything now we see on the map on the bottom again we have the range of 700 so this is going to appear whether you're a squad leader or not so you have to rely on your squad leader to give you ranges so what you're going to do is you're going to use left click right click on this little menu right here just select the range you're going to press calculate and you'll give you an angle height is usually neg negligible and many people find it better to either use it or not use it once you have that you'll use your w and s key to move the barrel elevation to match up with the angle that you have. Once you have that situated, you will then fire your rounds. As you can see, the infantry has pushed their way into south bunkers, and since they're out in the open, it's a good time to use mortars. So let's see how they affect the targets. Smoke. 
The high explosive rounds have a very great effect on the target. As the infantry are out in the open, there are no cover for them to hide behind, and they are trapped between us and our friendly units out in the field. Now let's get a closer look at the different types of rounds. So here we have high explosive rounds. Um, these rounds uh, explode on contact with the ground, and what's effective about these rounds is that they are really great against infantry, bomb emplacements, and also light vehicles. The con is that they're not that effective against enemies that are entrenched or are emplaced on balconies and higher up positions. Here we have the airburst rounds. Airburst rounds are rounds that explode uh, a few meters off the ground, and this is very effective against infantry that is uh, entrenched behind different uh, emplacements as well as on balconies, and has also a very great and effective range as well. Here we have the smoke rounds, which are used to cover an area with smoke that allows infantry to move up on position. This is the primary use for it, and is very effective um, in concealing infantry movement. The cons is that it does not hurt enemy infantry unless it's direct impact. So let's go in and assess the damages. So as you can see, the smoke rounds did a really great job of covering this area and concealing it. Now as we get closer to town, we can assess the damages that the explosive rounds have done. Um, what's important to know about the different types of rounds is that they all have a dispersion of around 25 to 50 meters from where you uh, target. So you'll get a nice spread and you can do a lot of damage. With that being said, this is the end of the episode guys. I hope you learned a lot about how to use the mortars. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comment below. Um, also leave any suggestions you may have for future episodes of Tips and Tactics. Um, again, I apologize for my lack of content and I hope you guys will stay tuned to the channel. Please like, subscribe, share with your friends. Also leave any tips or tactics that you guys may have also. But until then, I will see you guys in the next episode. Go ahead.